Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and this is my micro Bluetooth boombox. In today's video, we'll be building a Bluetooth speaker, but not just any Bluetooth speaker, a micro Bluetooth speaker that looks like an old boombox. I'll of course leave links down below for all the parts I used to build this, but without any further ado, let's just go ahead and jump into it. Now, parts we're going to use for this build are actually extremely few. All we're going to need is one Bluetooth amplifier board, two small speakers, I believe these are replacement speakers for a Game Boy, a three AAA battery holder, small power switch, a thin sheet of acrylic, I'm using Lexan, and glue for the acrylic, I'm just using super glue. You will need a few other things, but should all be stuff you can find around your house. So the first thing we're going to want to do is play around with all of our different electrical components and see what is the smallest housing we can get them to fit in. It looks like if I pack everything tightly, I can fit it all in a housing that is two and three quarters inch wide, an inch and a half tall, and an inch and a quarter deep. So now I'm going to take those dimensions and cut the six sides of our housing out of the acrylic plastic. Like this. Now of course here we have the top and bottom of the housing, the front and back, and then the two sides. So what we're going to want to do now is take the piece that is going to serve as the front of our housing and drill a hole on each side of it just large enough for our speakers. And we're going to want to drill these holes so that they are just barely smaller than the speakers themselves. Just like this. I'm now going to cut a small rectangular hole at the top just large enough for a power button to be able to slip through. Like so. With that, everything that need to be cut out is now cut out so we can begin to glue the housing together. However, do not glue on the back of the housing just yet. And here we are after everything is glued. I'm now going to take two small wood pieces and glue them onto the inside back of the side frames. Then drop the back of the whole assembly into place and screw into the wood pieces to hold it down. And with that, the housing of our boombox is now complete. However, I do want to add a small carrying handle to the top of it to make it look just that much more realistic. So what I'm going to do is get two small pieces of Lexan like this and cut a rather deep channel in the center of one. That way when we glue the two pieces together there will be a hole going all the way through that we can insert a small nail into. We'll now glue this onto the center top middle of the housing just like that. Now of course there is more work that needs to be done to it before it can truly be called a handle but it's best if we save that till after the painting. I'm going to paint mine dark gray but of course black or even red would also be cool so let's go ahead and paint it. And here we are after the paint has dried. As you can see, it came out a lot more black than it did gray, which is kind of a bummer, but we'll make it work. So now back to the handle. What I'm going to do to construct the handle itself is cut a small strip out of a piece of sheet metal, and drill a tiny hole at each end just large enough to fit a small nail in, then bend it into a U-shape to perfectly fit over the piece we glued on top of the housing. Just like this. So now after I take it to the bench grinder and clean it up a little bit, we can then drop it onto the base, inserting two small nails to hold it in place. Look at that, that is pretty cool. And I dropped in just a little bit of craft glue into the holes to stop the nails from backing out. I wanted to use super glue, but I was too scared I was gonna glue the handle down. With that, we can now finally move on to the internals of the boom box. So let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take my power switch that I already have lead soldered onto and drop it into its hole, then hot glue it in place. Just like that. Next, I'm going to solder the Bluetooth output wires onto the speakers, then drop the speakers into place and hot glue them down as well. Like that. Now I'm going to take a little bit of electrical tape and tape over the back of the speakers to make sure we don't short anything out. With that, we can now stuff the circuit board into the housing and hot glue it in place, making sure that we still have access to all of the power wires. We'll now solder the positive lead of the circuit board onto one of the leads of the switch, making sure to use heat shrink tubing on the joint. 
Now lastly, all that's left to do for the internals of the boombox is solder the negative wire from the circuit board and the positive wire from the switch onto the back of a 3 AAA battery holder, then pack it into the housing and you guessed it, hot glue in place. You could use a rechargeable battery for this if you want to, I just like having the ability to instantly swap out batteries once they die. Just like that. Now the boombox is technically finished, however I want to add just a little bit more detail to it. So what I'm going to do is take this thin screening I have and cut out two small squares and glue one over each speaker. I'm then going to draw a few things on some cardstock, like maybe a cassette player and some buttons or a few random stickers and then glue those on as well. Look at that, that is actually pretty cool. Now of course I hand drew these, so if you want to print yours out of the printer that would probably work even better. So now all that's left to do is to drop in the batteries and close up the back door. And with that, your mini boombox is now complete and ready to be tested. Okay, so now we can go ahead and turn it on. It'll give us a little noise to let us know it's on. That means it's on. And that means it's paired up with my phone. I, uh, I hooked it up earlier. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and compare the volume we get from this to the volume we get on my phone, which is a Galaxy Express. Of course, I'm going to turn the volume up all the way and I'll point to the one that's playing. So let's get started. Maybe I'm a little bit biased, I don't know, but it seemed to me like the boombox was a little bit louder, but they were very close. And I know I said I was going to run them both at full blast, but they're actually both about two notches below. It's been a while since I bought these speakers, I'm pretty sure they're ready for 5 volts, but whenever I crank up the volume all the way, I start to get scared I'm gonna break them. Maybe it's that, or maybe it's just that it hurts my ears whenever I crank it up full blast. But regardless, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out. When building it, I thought it'd be a cool little toy and I thought my phone would easily be able to outpower it, but that's just not the case. Of course, this is still just a little novelty item. There are not a whole lot of practical uses for it, but it is pretty awesome if I may say so myself. And in case anyone was wondering, with batteries and everything inside it, it weighs in at just under 94 grams. And there you have it, how to build a super tiny Bluetooth boombox. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.